today I'm going to show you how to make healthy homemade cream cheese. Very inexpensive. You can make large amounts and it's really, really good and it's actually good for you. And who doesn't love cream cheese? So isn't that great? This is so good and it actually makes a cream cheese that's good for you. Unlike a lot of what you buy at the store, there's no chemical process in this. You're going to use basically just milk, cultures, or you can start off with a store-bought yogurt either way but it's a very simple process and you can make a whole lot of cream cheese out of just a very little bit of milk it doesn't cost that much if you do it from scratch um, and it turns out so good it is so much more flavorful than what you buy in the store a lot of times the cheesecakes that you buy at the high-end restaurants and, and cheesecake shops they have to add sour creams and all to their cheesecake to give it a richer flavor you don't have to do this because with this natural homemade cream cheese it's going to be so flavorful and rich you're going to love it it's going to make the best desserts the best cheese balls the best snacks and it's just it's really good for you it's full of probiotics you can't beat that so i'm going to show you how it's this done it's going to be super easy you can do this with either store-bought products or homemade and i'll show you how to do it either way it works fine very simple very quick process uh, it takes very minimal effort at all, and it's really great. And look at all it makes. Look at all this cream cheese. Isn't that amazing? Who would not want to make all of this yummy homemade cream cheese to make rich cheesecakes and dips and desserts and snacks and yummy? Right, since I'm doing this with homemade yogurt, this is how much yogurt I typically make from one gallon of milk. So I want to see how much cream cheese I can get from one gallon of milk. So I'm going to use the whole gallon. You don't have to. If you're starting with a small uh, store-bought container, for example, you can, you can do it in a small one. You don't have to do a batch this big, but it will be the same process regardless. For the first step, you want a colander and something to catch because we want to get some of this weight off and you're going to need some cheesecloth. Because I'm using such a large amount of yogurt, I am going to use two cheesecloths just folded in half. Uh, of course, it would just take one if you were doing a smaller amount. Alright, so I just want to simply dump your yogurt in the cheesecloth. My yogurt's very thick because I make a homemade yogurt. Again, if you want to know how to make this awesome thick homemade yogurt, I'm going to have to get a spoon to pull it out with. Uh, see my video on how to make homemade yogurt. And a little tip on the homemade yogurt, uh, if you make it like two weeks in advance or a week in advance, the longer you leave it in the refrigerator, the thicker it gets. And of course, the more flavorful of a cream cheese it's going to make when you turn it into cream cheese. Alright, once I have my all of my yogurt, my one gallon of milk's worth of yogurt in there, I want to pick up all of my edges because it's getting to be too much for my colander anyway I'm just going to show you how it's already the way is already starting to come out of there you could leave it tie it off and leave it like this in the fridge um, but you would have to drain the way out of there every once in a while to make sure it doesn't get to where it's sitting in it um, but another way to make sure that it drains even better would be to suspend it over in a pot so that it's actually hanging and the fluids are coming out so I'm gonna show you how to do that all right so I take some twine and this is just a little technique that I like to do when I'm hanging the cheese is I like to run the twine just run it in your colander and around and tie it and so the twine is actually helping to support the weight of the cheese in the cloth um, and as the, the whey drains out that cloth is gonna start to droop a little bit so you're gonna probably have to tighten it up but that just to me makes it much more secure so it doesn't sag as badly and then I'm gonna take it and tie it to a spoon and we'll use that to suspend it in the pot all right and so we're gonna let this be suspended in the fridge for about 24 hours and we'll come back on it you're gonna need to remember to check this every once in a while um, and make sure that it's not sitting in the way because it's gonna produce a good bit of whey for the first 24 hours until it's drained and kind of dried out some uh, and also if you're not making this big of an amount you can suspend this in a pitcher or something smaller so you don't take up that much room in your fridge 
All right, after about 24 hours of dripping into that container, pot, pitcher, whatever you use, we're going to go ahead and open it up, scrape it all out. You'll see that it's already pretty dry and cream cheese-esque. But at this point, you're going to want to salt it. If you're going to store it just for cream cheese for use in any kind of cream cheese recipe, just salt it. But you could also, if you wanted to flavor it for, say, a cheese ball or a spread with, like, onion powder or garlic powder or even chives or anything like that, you could do that at this point. But for right now, I'm just going to salt it. And to salt it, you typically want to use a kosher, non-iodized salt. Um, but it doesn't too much matter. I typically just use sea salt because this isn't going to last all that long. Anyway, we're going to cook it and use it up. And the only thing about iodine is that it'll discolor your, your product. So and you're going to want to mix your salt in very, very well, which it's stiffening up really well. So that's kind of hard to do. Uh, you could do it with a cake mixer. That's going to kind of aerate it and fluff it up. I tend to just kind of mix it around. You can get in there with your hands if you want. And once we get this well mixed, we're going to need to shape it and age it um, or cure it because it's really not aging very long. But you definitely want to let this kind of cure for a good three days at least before because the flavors are going to continue to um, intensify and it's going to get just really 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 delicious so you want to wait at least three days so let me show you how we're going to do this all right if you have a cheese press you want to press it but since most of us don't and this is not something you're going to be doing every day even though you might since it makes so much amazing healthy probiotic filled chemical free cream cheese uh, you might be doing this more regularly, but until then, what I typically do is just put it in a container, cover it with a saucer or something like that, and place something heavy on it, like a can of pie filling or something like that. And we're going to press it and let it age for a couple of days. If you taste it right now, it's going to still have a bit of a yogurty flavor. Um, you'll, you'll notice that it's starting to taste a little more like cream cheese. But after about three days in the curing, you will notice a wonderful cream cheese flavor. All right. Now, we don't need a heavy press like you would for solid cheeses because cream cheese is it's a soft cheese. So... We're not terribly concerned about getting it too firm, but what I do is this. You want to cover it completely uh, and also set your cheesecloth in whatever container because that's going to help you to get it out easily without it sticking to your container. And it's also going to allow it to secrete more of the, uh, the whey. So after a day or so, you might want to go take this and tip it and tilt it like this to see if any more whey comes loose. So what I'm going to do now, I will put my saucer pressing on it, and then I will put something heavy, some weight, and just set it in the refrigerator, you know, for a couple of days, and it will continue to press. And then we'll come back and look at it again after about three days. All right, my cheese has aged for about a week. In the refrigerator, you can use the term age loosely, it's really more of a curing process. Um, and you see I moved it to a little bit bigger bowl so that my saucer would fit more firmly in there. It had a little bit of weight on it and that helps to press out any extra weight that's still in there. So that would have needed to be drained off somewhere midweek. Um, so now I just remove it all. And this makes an actually quite a large amount of cream cheese. This was, remember, from one gallon of milk. And in the end, I ended up with 69 ounces, I believe, which comes, came out to the equivalent of a little over eight and a half of the little eight ounce cubes that you buy in the store that I made from one gallon of cheap store brand milk. Cost $3 here. 
Um, I know from the yogurt video, several people told me that up north you can get uh, milk for like a dollar eighty a gallon. So this would be a lot of cream cheese for a very small amount of money. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this out. And remove the cheesecloth. Lots of cream cheese. I love cream cheese. Okay. All right. As you can see, we have a large amounts of cream cheese. I'm gonna try to give you a good close up so you can see when I cut this. The texture is. Perfect. This is real cream cheese. And the flavor is so much better than what you get in the store. It has a richer flavor. Of course, um, this would be plain cream cheese. It's just salted. You could have seasoned it. You can still season it and make a cheese ball with it, or you can sugar it to make cheesecake or desserts. But this is real cream cheese. Healthy, full of probiotics, no chemical process. There is nothing in this except for milk, salt, and probiotics. How awesome is that? Healthy cream cheese. Love it. Lemon blueberry cream cheese bars. Messy, yummy goodness. As you can see, we ended up with quite a lot of cream cheese. This is the equivalent of eight of the little bars that you buy in the store. This cost me three dollars to make. Um, like I said, Earlier, some people tell me you can get the milk even cheaper up north, and so this is really very cost effective, and it's so good. Plus, you get to tell all your friends and family that you made your own cream cheese when you serve the dessert. That tastes so much better than what they could get at a restaurant, so you know you're going to want to do this. It is amazing. I'm excited. This is going to be in the bloopers where you can't open the wheat thins. <laughs> I can open jars of pickles, mayonnaise, really bad at wheat thins, but I'm very excited. Pepper jelly, homemade, and cream cheese. The Just homemade cream, cream cheese, cheese with a pepper jelly. And this is my favorite part. The taste test.